What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again. And this time we are here with Anders of the Almighty Cadaver. Thank you so much for being here. It is great to have you here, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you got it, man. Your new album, The Age of the Offended, is absolutely kick-ass. I remember uh, during the lockdown, I was interviewing Dirk about uh, Elder and Bile, which was also a fantastic album. Is this more or less kind of like a continuation of Elder of Edder and Bile, or is um, The Age of the Offended almost kind of like a new beginning for Cadaver and new territory? I mean, I think every album we make is a new beginning, and this time we uh, also invited back... Um, one of the original old members, Eilert Solstad, the infamous double bass player that we had. Uh, many people don't realize this uh, now, but uh, he came on stage with us with a double bass back in 1991 already. And uh, at that time, that was avant-garde, and I think it still is within this kind of music. So. Um, uh, his uh, addition to the band is one thing, and uh, of course, uh, Ronnie Litekra playing lead guitar and insane guitar on top of everything we did. It makes the whole um, album sound and feel like something out of this world. It's even more exciting for me that uh, we're having more musicians on board doing their individually uh, skills into the band and make it sound even more uh, cadaver-like, if you know, if you if that's a word i don't know but uh, to me it's all about being original and different from everybody else and i think we achieve that every time but this time i think we kind of overdid that uh, uh to our exp expectations so to speak so i'm very happy about the, the album when i interviewed uh, uh dirk uh, before like i even jokingly said that uh cadaver is a uh, is a grindcore duet uh, but to bring uh, Ellert uh, on board, is, <laughs> to bring Ellert back on board is absolutely awesome. So is that almost going to bring us back to maybe some stuff that we may have heard off of like the hallucinating anxiety uh, debut? Is it going to kind of maybe be reminiscent of that with him coming back on board? Is there any throwback elements into it? No, the only throwback element to me is to have uh, more uh, creative uh, people on board. It's always good for a band that you you know, try to incorporate more um, texture and let musicians come with uh, their own ideas into what you originally have. I mean, me and Dirk is pretty much the core of the band's songwriting, and uh, it's been now through 25 songs, so I think we already have uh, established a way of writing together, and uh, having those two guys coming in with their own flavor on top of that to make it even more exciting for us. It's uh, been a hell of a ride, and um, I think it's important uh, for us going forward to have uh, sort of unlimitless uh, uh, ideas to what Cadaver can be. It's always going to be strange, insane, and different from everybody else, and that's always been the aim, but now we, I think we have the crew to make that go even deeper and wider so it's always exciting to make new music with this incredible people and being that you know like cadaver is such a going right into it there's such like a punk rock aspect behind it it's very organic it's full force and really just has a great essence of like organized chaos if you will is there like a lot of forethought that goes into the making of every cadaver album in a way is there a lot of like thought process or do you kind of just all go right into it and let things kind of fall into place yeah, it's more like we. I always write out of uh, pure energy and uh, inspiration in the moment, and uh, we really want to capture what we do as an intuitive thing. You know, it's not going to be thought out super cleverly in the beginning. It all has to just feel right and uh, you know sit well with where we're going and. Uh, I find it really interesting to make uh, the first run of ideas and pick out the best parts of that rather than co constructing music. It's never been a really good idea for any bands, I think. Uh, I've been in constructing music bands too, but to have the, the more organic spark or the inspiration into it is very important if you want to make something that really stands out. and. Uh, it's all about having really skilled musicians that are able to do that. And that's the key here. If you 
just spark into something and you don't really know what you're doing that's a total different aspect you know if you have musicality and uh depth in your approach to your instrument and just uh, bring that into it it just feels more inspired uh, inspired and uh, that's all all we go for inspired music inspired riffs inspired turnarounds and all that stuff it has to feel like it's interesting for us yeah it's that energy that you channel into cadaver it was cool to hear you say that word is that almost come out of nowhere for you in a way does the energy just strike or do you almost kind of seek out that energy and maybe like have a place where you go to cultivate ideas i mean whenever i sit down with my guitar and my studio i just come up with stuff i have no idea where that comes from <laughs> if i knew i would uh probably be very sad it's more it's more like I just follow whatever the idea is and see where it takes me. And it's kind of in interesting with music as you can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't feel it, you know, there's nothing nothing but emotions. So it's just following whatever that brings you. And uh, that's the most interesting aspect with music, I think, uh, is the fact that you have no idea where it takes you. And it's the most interesting thing with uh, music. Absolutely. Uh, and has, is the has it always been the same creative process with every project you've been involved with, whether it was Satyricon or Magenta or Order or any other project you've been involved with, or has the creative process been a completely separate mind frame and a completely different energy altogether? Uh, every of those projects are totally different. Cadaver is for me my free zone to just do my most insane ideas and uh, spark the energy of my youth into wherever it takes me and uh it's where i belong the most for sure mm -hmm. would you say like uh because with magenta and satyricon like uh you were almost kind of like coming into that being like this is how i have to play whereas cadaver it's completely your rules and your own vision no, Magenta was also my rules and my vision, but it was a total different uh, musical approach, um, doing more experimental kind of different things uh, with music, um, more um, uh, downbeat and uh, different instrumentation. But Cadaver is where I feel that uh, I just take my guitar and bring my inner uh spirit animal or whatever into the guitar and see what comes out and it's uh what i find most rewarding of all the projects i mean order is a kind of like that it's basically me and Mannheim doing the same thing but that always lands in a different field so it's like that belongs in a different planet so it, it, it's kind of weird how that works you know if you work with some people something else something happens if you just work the same instrument with somebody else, total different things happens. Mm. So I don't know how to explain that, but it's an interesting journey to just explore music with uh, other musicians and see where it takes you. Absolutely. And I feel like with uh, Cadaver, you really do capture a moment with every album, as you said, in a way, because I don't think you know any album sounds like hallucinating anxiety i don't think another cadaver album sounds like in pains or discipline or necrosis etc so has like almost every uh cadaver album almost been kind of like a reflection of who you are at that particular time do you look at every uh, cadaver album as like a self-portrait in a way or is this music uh mainly an escapism where you don't really bring too much of your personal experiences into it no, I would say it's a very personal experience. It's all that matters, really. You know, that's what we didn't really know that when we were younger, but now it's more, um, it's more obvious when you get older that you really try to capture whatever is inside you. Uh, when you're young, you just try to figure out how to do things, and uh, you, you, you don't really know if you have your own sound or anything. You just try to explore uh, what you're trying to do, but. Uh, the older you get, the more you realize that you pretty much, you know, create your own tones and sounds from yourself. And uh, whatever that brings to the whole project is where we're at, you know. It's, uh, it's basically a journey through time and space with the, with the instruments and making, the, you know, something from where you are right now. And it's always interesting to see 
where it takes you further and further into uh, whatever. It's um, an interesting journey. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't like to normally analyze uh, album titles too much and ask, like, what does the album name mean or something like that? Because it's been so cliche and I know every musician dreads that question. But um, I feel like with, like, hallucinating anxiety or in pains or discipline, they're almost like traits that we as humans have in a way. I almost feel like it is expressing an internal uh, trait that people have. But the age of the offended, it almost does describe like a setting. It describes like a place in time combined with that character trait. And I could have just overanalyzed the hell out of the album title. But like, was uh, this album, <laughs> was there almost kind of like a lot of looking outward uh, in with the making of this album? Was it almost kind of like a statement in a way where we are the age of the offended in a way, or is it talking about something more rooted in personal experience? I think I wanted to make uh, something that would reflect our time at, as well as, uh, you know, something which could be timeless eventually. You know, I think the times we are in right now is very interesting in a way which is uh, really inspiring but also very annoying because it feels like a lot of things going backwards um all the turmoil that has you know been a result of all the yeah we had the climate change the pandemic the wars inflation whatever you know all the things that is thrown at you whoa yeah all the things are are thrown at us all the time constantly from social media and media and all that stuff if you, you know, back in the day when I grew up, we didn't pay attention to 10 million things that other people cared about or didn't care about. We only were aware of the facts around us in our lives, where we were, you know. And I think now that the fact that people are so obsessed with uh, having opinions about all kinds of things, they have no clue insight or even interest in is uh overshadowing anything interesting that it could do is that it's like uh, back in the day if people were really annoyed by something they just ignored it now it, it seems like everybody wants to be annoyed by everything and just talk about that instead of being inspired by things and it feels like if all you do every day is to sit online and get pissed off by whatever it is don't you want to have a life instead you know uh isn't it more interesting to actually do something and uh, create something and be aware of things that interest you rather than things you hate or or are against you know it's all that stuff and back in the day we were totally against a lot of things or pointing out things in society or with religion and all that stuff but it wasn't like our full-time life wasn't sitting getting pissed off by all these things we would rather treasure the things that we really cared about and i think that's a sign of i don't know the sickness of our time is that people seem to be totally obsessed with everything but what should be important for them it's so funny you mentioned that too because like you know in the end i mean this is pissed off music so like i've always said like couldn't the most annoying things also be the most inspirational in a way too like i think uh you know the results of everything annoying led great with this album the age of the offended and what's funny is is um after I listened to Edder and Bile and being completely starstruck by that, I was saying if they're writing another album right now, uh, it's going to be even more pissed off than this one. And uh, you most certainly <laughs> did. So, like, yeah. um, it has maybe that annoyance. Do you think that maybe the annoyances of humanity is almost, I mean, I don't want to say counterintuitive, but, like, it's almost <laughs> leads to great results. I mean, metalheads come from pissed off kids, and there's a lot more to be pissed off now. And, you know. Yeah, that's a, I mean, to be pissed off is great. I think that if you uh, if you uh, take the things you're pissed off about and bring it into art or uh, an expression or something which uh, ma makes you a creator of something, you know, if you 
are just pissed off and go out and smash everything around you. It's probably not a very constructive thing. Whether it's being online, uh, being a troll, you know, I, I love to see those, um, you know, whenever there's like a comment about this title and they're like, uh, flip flop the whole idea. It's like, I'm really offended now or uh, uh, even better if that people are, you know, comparing it to things I've never heard about or whatever it is. I'm thinking, don't you understand that this is, you know, <laughs> this is the whole point. If you sit there and are annoyed by this and take your time to write that down and post it, you're pretty much the part of the whole thing I'm pointing out. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm not saying that you all should agree with me. I just say that be aware of the fact that you not agreeing with anything at all anymore and being annoyed or offended by everything, blah, blah, blah. That is, is only the only thing that does to you is it takes over your head and your time. And it's like, it, uh, it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a, a therapy session would probably solve a lot of things, but uh, I don't know. People should probably start thinking, oh, this is the thing he's pointing out that I'm, <laughs> you know, spending all my day, all my time thinking about other people and what they shouldn't do instead of thinking about what I could do instead, you know, like it's, it's kind of obvious to me, you know, but people need to be pointed out on the obvious because it's so difficult to live an interesting life, but it's really, really easy to uh, point to others and say that you shouldn't do things like that. That's really, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, there you have it, you know. It's kind of insane how that loops just falls back on the same people. So I'm um, I'm mesmerized by it, but I'm also amused by it. You know, I'm not angry about it. It's more like I'm amused by the fact that people don't understand how stupid they let themselves become. I feel like this album in itself is almost like a social experiment, which I think is absolutely uh, awesome. I think that it adds so much context to the material. But, you know, being that Cadaver has been around, you know, your first record came out, what, like in the late 80s or early 90s or something like that. Um, 1990, I believe, Hallucinating Anxiety came out. So yeah. what was the source of, like, inspiration uh, kind of like from Hallucinating Anxiety to In Pains and Discipline in a way? Because we didn't have those platforms to get pissed off at so was it were you looking at other mediums in a way or was it coming from a more personal spot in a way or something like that i mean there's always been uh i mean being a human being growing up uh getting to understand that authority is just uh taking their authority from nothing basically and nobody older than you actually knows more than you somehow in certain things when you realize that everybody's just uh, stupid people, I mean, not just stupid people, but I mean, we're just silly people. Everybody's silly. And you have to, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're too self-aware or self, uh, how should I say, feeling self-pity or um, don't have a, a humoristic side to life, I always found that really disturbing that people are taking everything literally or seriously or stuff like this instead of thinking for themselves or uh, making up their own mind. Uh, now people say that they're making made up their own mind, but that's really not what they're doing. They're just trying to find the people that have the same viewpoint as they do on certain topics and they are ending up in all these different kind of echo chambers and they are um, you know I don't know it's it's so many things that like you said back in the day it was uh, no online world or stuff like this uh, but we had the sources we had but now it seems like everything's on turbo steroids so we can you can <laughs> And there's endless topics we can do on this topic now. You know, I can probably make an album like this 
once a month with the themes we have now to you know it's endless yeah that's why like i mean i try to see the bright side of everything and be like yeah you know there's a lot of shit in the world but with every tragedy comes another line of inspiration in a way which seems sure. kind of a uh kind of cynical in a way to say but like i think in the end there a lot of this tragedy after we learn how to overcome it and not repeat those mistakes i think it all can like lead to good things in terms of what we can create out of it in a way because in a world if, if we lived in a utopious world which utopia translates to the land that cannot be but if we lived in a world where nothing went wrong i think it would be the most boring world in the world and the most boring world in the universe and uh we wouldn't even have any art out there that would be as, as captivating exactly right on the money <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, is actually, and I normally use this question first, but I figure we would end with it because I do think that The Age of the Offended is without a doubt uh, one of, if not the best Cadaver album. I really just goes full on force. But for people who haven't heard this album yet, with the singles that we heard so far, The Age of the Offended and Scum of the Earth, is that, would you say, a good representation of what this whole album is going to sound like? Or is there a lot more to be discovered on songs such as The Shrink or The Sicker, The Better, or uh, Dissolving Chaos, etc.? No, yeah, I mean, it's so hard to pick singles. Uh, if it was up to me, we would just release all the songs within you know with one month between uh to highlight because i think uh all the songs deserve uh, its own space but uh, uh if you never heard a band before and you listen to this song or two songs it's definitely telling you something that this band has a different approach a different kind of sound and uh what else is there a lot of things you know <laughs> so you can be even more uh, intrigued by the fact that uh, those songs are probably kind of standing alone on their, their two feet and everything else is even more different in all kinds of directions so I hope that people find uh, the time to listen to the whole album uh, as we used to do back in the day, now people listen to a couple of songs but uh, for the hardcore people who likes uh, music uh, that are uh, varied within albums this is a good album to start with because you can listen to this album and think you've been listening to 12 different versions of the same band uh, and listen to it again and listen to it again and then realize it's giving you more and more information the more you listen to it so i hope that people dive deep into it and uh, enjoy it even more then awesome and i can't wait for the rest of the world to hear it it's definitely uh it's definitely i would say a 13 track killing spree that's my review of uh the age of the offended so oh thank you man yeah. <laughs> thank you but appreciate th it yeah, anytime man everybody we are here with cadaver be sure to check out the age of the offended coming out very soon via nuclear blast this is alex from heavy new york and we will see you next time